Hello, Scott. Thank you for being here with Awakened Hidden Truth. My pleasure. I have to consider as I go into these every week and gales and whatever else I'm doing, spending time separate from all this, which doesn't involve money for my part, uh, to do promotion of my work and my books that more people can cross paths with myself and associates who are not from this planet, who are engaged in a process now of ending the experiment of evil on Earth and in other planets and in the lower dimensions. This is part of why I do what I do. It's not to get people to believe it or even care if they do. What I work with is telepathy, a true form of communication, which connects with beings on Earth. When they go out of their bodies at night, and they do, every one of them, they're masters, experts at leaving their body, and they don't even know it. They don't realize that they're able to turn the pineal gland on the center of the brain, secrete certain chemicals that put the body in automatic, and they leave. They do it unconsciously, but they all do it. The higher faculties and awareness that would give them the ability to know this with certainty have been shut down artificially imposed upon people on earth that's suppressive and certain control fear programs were placed in the artificially created domain called the subconscious mind normal beings on other worlds and other realities don't have subconscious minds first thing i want to get across to people which means that they're trapped on earth in a way but it's not permanent Because what's underway now is designed to help them unravel that tight knot. When they get out of their body at night, they're going to be meeting beings from other worlds, my associates. Master teachers, great technicians, kind beings. And they're going to be in a higher state than the fear that drives their nervous system while they're in the body on earth. Cultures like that, governments are deceiving everybody. People grow up with no awareness, no training about what the imagination is or how to use it. So they just think they're making all this stuff up in their brain, which is not true. When people daydream and they see a waterfall, or they want to get out of a boring class and they're looking at something that's pleasurable to them. You know, out in the stream, playing in the beach. People do it all the time, but they don't realize that the real them, not the body or the brain, even when the eyes are open, is what's seeing that because the brain has no ability to see anything there's no motion picture camera in the brain or projector for you to be able to see stuff that's not what it's designed to do and people have been very misdirected to believe that the brain is making this stuff up this is not true the brain can't do that it's not designed to do that the being that's running the body which is spherically shaped like that poster behind you on the, in the cupboard there, is a structure that has a physical shape, characteristics, different levels to it, different teardrop self-evolvent glowing energy fields in it that record information, that understand wisdom, that have all the lives you've ever lived in billions of years there since you left the higher worlds to come in this experiment of positive and negative, good and bad. The whole idea was to figure out how to create the lower dimensions of time and space to be mirrors of the upper dimensions that exist far beyond the void known to certain religious orders on this planet, Earth. Part of us, as this spherical nature, is made of this energy from the source itself that is far, far above the void, known to... I don't want to point out any group, but with some Buddhist monks, they, they are taught that's the highest place and there's nothing beyond it. This is not true. It's just what they've been taught. So they don't attempt to imagine what's beyond it and they don't go there. And sometimes beings just need a little help. They need to be able to have a guide that helps them see again what is there so they can travel on this omnipresent living energy that supports all life and go there. Because that's how we travel, out of body. The atma, what we're made of, is spherical, like a sun or a moon. Those creations are patterned after what we really look like as energy, not matter. 
not nuclear, not atoms. It's an energy that existed before atoms were created, before time and space was made. And we all, as atoms, come from that source. We are comprised of the very same energy as that source. Tyrants in history, not just Earth history that's been made to be forgotten by people, galactic history too, control masses of people by misusing technology to create artificial terrorizing programs place it in a subconscious or unconscious energy field around the spherical being itself through which the being sees and knows truth. And it sees distortions of that truth instead of what it's supposed to see. And there's terror involved in those programs that keep people on earth so afraid of knowing what they knew and what happened to them before they were born. It keeps them running around in circles and incarnations here. Fear and terror and doubt create and compulsively compel a being to reincarnate in another body here when they die. And they'll be drawn to beings who will also encourage this because they think if they get back in another body, that's a sense of security for them. It's a negative sense of security because it's not real. There's no such thing as security in a physical body. We all know they grow old. You get born, you grow old, you die. There's no such thing as security in a physical form. The only security is in the atma itself, knowing who and what it is, what it's made like, what it looks like, and how to move it around in the multidimensional creation, like it once knew how to do. My work is about assisting people all over this planet, and billions of other beings I work with, thousands at least, from one day to the next, who are not native to this planet, did not get born here, didn't live a life here, never got subjected to the cultures and misdirecting energy that is on this planet, which doesn't tell people anything about anything, about who they are or what they can know or how to move it around the universe while they have a body alive on this planet. So I bring that out. for this YouTube recordings for your show, because when truth is uttered telepathically, it's true for all beings everywhere, it's not true, or it's not true at all. And if it's true for all beings everywhere, it hits the white core of their being, not the brain, not the body, and begins to get things moving again. This is what is called the new ray of consciousness in the omnipresent first sound that supports and sustains all creation in all the dimensions, through all the planets, all the way through the void and into the upper fields of energy and dimensions far above the void. There's a field of energy running through it all that is not nuclear, it is not atomic, it's not made of atoms or neutrons or protons or any of that. It's behind it. It fills the void of space. And it's not black or dark like it looks, what they call dark matter. Even scientists on Earth know that it isn't dark. They just can't see it with physical eyes. Instruments can see what it is and colorful and how beautiful. And if they look at it rightly, they can actually see its bright white light with a golden tinge running through everything between galaxies, between stars, between planets. It's, things are floating in it. That energy field is situated in different dimensions at different rates of frequency, but not molecular frequency. And at each level, it supports the matter and molecular time rate of molecules that make up that dimension. For instance, in the physical universe, there's 144 parallel dimensions, not an infinite number. 144 that have different Earth in each one at a higher molecular time rate that exist with life and beings and bodies on them. More advanced races in the physical universe, in craft, can travel between all 144 and have trade and associations with all of them. The more advanced extraterrestrial races, many of them human. The DNA that makes up the DNA on humans not from Earth, in non-tyrant controlled worlds, because they're few in number, is not like DNA on humans on Earth. 
the DNA, what are called genomes on the DNA in normal people have what they used to call junk DNA, genomes that were not turned on. They know that they're just, that they're not junk DNA, they're just turned off. So they say people use six to 10% of their brain on earth. They have a 100% developed brain. It's not futuristic. It doesn't need to mature later. And they use six to 10% of it. Why? Because certain genomes have been shut off that don't allow the being that's running that body to send higher faculties through that brain and nervous system. They're blocked. That's all reversible. Some of the humans in other worlds have four-stranded DNA. If just the human beings on Earth had the genomes turned back on on their double-stranded DNA, they would use 100% of their brain. It doesn't need to be developed later. It needs to be given back to people, turned on. The technology to do that is not on this Earth, but it can be brought here from friends from out of town, from off-planet. There has to come a time when people on this planet collectively raise in vibration enough to request. That means everyone, people, populace, majority, governments, classified uh, governments, hidden governments, all that stuff. There will come a time when they will want this assistance from the stars openly. It's going to take a little humbling, maybe some respect. But they have to understand that the beings who come here are willing to provide this at no cost, already respect beings on Earth. Not the way they are, but the way they will be if they're freed from this subconscious, misdirecting, terrorizing nonsense. People are terrified of the future on Earth. They're terrified of getting out of their body because they think they'll get trapped again like they did that put them here. That's not possible anymore. People can't get trapped that way anymore because the tyrants that were doing that from other worlds have been moved away from the solar system permanently. The solar system and this planet are quarantined by more advanced races because people on Earth are not operating in all thrusters. They're being manipulated and maneuvered by subconscious programs they don't even have to make wrong decisions about almost everything every day. The tyrants aren't here, but the programs remain. So that has to be undone, reversed, neutralized. It's as simple as that. People are going to be starting to get help from vast, very advanced adept master teachers, high, high developed uh, technicians and scientists and things like this from other worlds, who travel the stars and ships, but who can also travel instantly from their worlds to Earth in the true form that they are that isn't physical. They can do both. And these beings can meet with beings when they're out of their body on Earth, when they put their body in the trance state called sleep. Everyone's out of their body. How can they be afraid of what they're, they just don't know it. They think, oh, I get out of my body, uh, an evil demon will capture me. And some religions tell people this. This is not true. They've already been caught and put on this earth with no memory. You can't get more caught than being on this planet. So they can't. The only way from here for beings on earth now is up from where they are now to recovering what they once knew and then moving more into mastery through the, the new ray, as I call it, in the omnipresent hue that is working <clears throat> now to liberate the lower, <clears throat> the lower dimensions of what we call time and space from subconscious influences and be replacing those with the inspiration and motivation at the core of their being, not the physical body, to want to create only that which is <clears throat> of an uplifting benefit to all life, not just life on Earth. That won't do it. People on Earth need to remember about life in the other worlds before it was taken from them so they can start imagining and thinking on a more multidimensional level, which they're capable of when they're out of their bodies. So that's what this work is about, and this is underway. It is not reversible by any power on Earth, period. 
or any power out in the stars. It doesn't come from the physical universe and it supersedes previous creations because it is coming through in one direction. It's not part of the positive and negative streams in the lower planes. It can't be influenced by them and it has dominance over them and it's changing things for the good of all life, period. No other motivation behind it whatsoever. So I want to say that to people because once it's said and they're aware of it, they can begin, even unconsciously, part of them. A deeper part of people on Earth has always had the ability to have dominance over any form of negativity, negative being in or out of bodies, or the misuse of technology. But beings on Earth have been made to doubt that and forget that and fear it. And when they have doubt and fear, other beings can control them and keep them in that their whole lives. My work is about assisting all the people on earth and all the animals and all the plant life to go through a change back to being normal. This means people on earth and animals and plant life are not normal. That's all people know. That's all they're taught growing up. That's all their peers tell them. PhDs that are not classified who don't know the deeper science that classified people do will te teach people theory and they believe there might be life on other planets. Keeps people kind of pretty dumbed down their whole life because they're not certain about anything. That is not a normal state for a human being to live in that way. A normal state of a being, a human being, or a human man or a human woman being, is to know who they are as an animal, <clears throat> what it's comprised like, how to utilize the different faculties in it, and to move it around the universe, to co-create with many other beings new ways of doing things so we can end this experiment of evil on Earth and in the lower dimensions permanently. Something has to replace what was the experiment of evil, the fight between good and bad, with something that actually works behind it in order to change it. And that had to be created in the upper worlds above the void first. And then it can be implemented in the lower worlds. That's underway. So I want to share that with people to give them a little, I don't want to say food for thought, but food for knowing, recovery, remembering, recall. Did your people, do you have uh, any questions for me, Perry, or anybody that's written to you or any answers you want me to try to provide for people that have asked? Um, I don't have any questions to this, but I would like to share my experience because we had a um, private session just before we do the show. And I just like to tell everyone that, you know, I have like, got help from master teachers and many friends from other, I mean, from beings, you know. Very I appreciate they are so kind, you know. So everybody should go on the journey, you know, experience yourself, and then your life will be much better. Thanks, Perry, for sharing that. Obviously, as one individual, it's not possible for me. Well, it probably could be, but not in the current situation even I'm in, to do one-on-one -on -one sessions with seven billion people on this planet. That's not necessary. The beings I work with, and billions of them are working with people when they get out of their bodies at night now. Leaders of the, of the governments of this planet, hidden, classified people. Many of them now, majority, do not want to continue a classified system. They want to tell the truth, they want to get clean on it. And they want to do it in a way that's safe, not only for them, but for all the people on earth. Revenge and hatred and anger cannot be part of this coming change. People on earth just have to grow up enough and be big enough to not care anymore who did what to who in the past and just drop it like a lead brick. Because that's how karma and reincarnation come to an end. As long as people keep creating this demand for payback, the system keeps being stall, uh, stuck in a perpetual loop of good and bad, and it doesn't go anywhere any further. We've got all the planets and galaxies in place and all the different dimensions and the doorways between dimensions guarded, supervised, and all that's in place and everything works. But the lower dimensions are not yet mirrors of the upper worlds as they were intended to be. 
what is underway now for the first time has to do with assisting people to co-create voluntarily, getting that to happen on all the levels, not just for Earth. It's not a selfish endeavor. For people to do that and become normal, to be who they were meant to be, co-creators with the source itself, not co-worshippers of a tyrant, co-creators trusted with it. And then they can expand and evolve in wondrous ways they couldn't even imagine once they start down that road. And that's for everyone. Scott, can I mention one thing? Um, because I get some comments from people, they understand that um, they can like meditate by themselves, not practicing, not practicing. Uh, practicing with the cue or stuff like that, and then they can just get free, which is not that easy, you know. This is I don't my know of any anybody that can prove or verify anywhere from any guru or teacher ever in the history of this world that has ascended someone who's come back and said, I'm ascended. Here's the proof. There isn't any such thing. Because beings have to be free within their own awareness individually. It can't be given to them on a golden platter from some master teacher. They have to waken up uh, enough to co-create, getting out of their own trap with those who can help them get out of it. That's how it really works. Because otherwise a being, if it was just given freedom, would trap itself through unconsciousness and ignorance and lack of experience and get all back into a life on earth and think they're a body and forget everything. So the real master teachers work with beings to help them recover this knowing they once had, but with a new wisdom that allows them to keep it permanently. That's different. New tools, new energy, the new ray, I call it, in the hue itself, this omnipresent force that sustains all life, have been provided for these master teachers whose hands were pretty much tied in history to liberate many people from any worlds anywhere. They spend lifetimes training some chela or student, and maybe one out of a thousand would get off and out of this world somehow. Not a fun task. I didn't envy any of them. They now have the tools they need to help liberate people much more expediently and swiftly, permanently, than they ever had before. This is a fact, and it has to do with a new energy in the omnipresent, what people call divine spirit, that was never there before in all of hundreds of billions of years that is there now. And it only works one way, and it works through the planes of matter and time and space in them effectively, but they're not, it's not made of matter. It's not nuclear. It's not atomic in nature. It has mastery over those things. And it's moving in one direction to neutralize what has been all this time that has been a failed experiment and has not worked with something that can actually awaken people so it can work, so they can be co-creators as they were meant to be, to make the lower dimensions mirrors of the upper worlds. This was the original goal. Now for the first time, it's actually underway. I've never said this, I don't think this way on any public radio show before, but this is much deeper than just the subject of extraterrestrials. Any being that lives outside of this earth in any parallel dimension, even on the other earths at higher molecular time rate frequencies and 144 of them in the astral, causal, mental, etheric, void, up in the upper worlds to the very source itself, they're all extraterrestrial to someone on earth. And they shouldn't be. That right there will trigger things in people to begin to cross paths with beings that are capable of helping them when they're out of their body at night, when the body's asleep. To unloosen these tight coils of fear until they can wake up in the physical just simply knowing stuff again with certainty. And people will begin to communicate with each other in a higher way. This is the way it has to be done so there isn't chaos, pandem pandemonium and rioting in the streets and anger and fear and destruction and all that nonsense. You can't transform a world through that method. It just creates ripples in space time that create the same circumstances down the road. 
It can't be done that way. And it's not being done that way. It's the way it was done in the past, but nothing ever changed. Being still got caught in bodies, still forgot, lived in lives on planets, think in their bodies, live, grow old and die in a few years, and then they're recycled right back into the mess over and over and over again. It's pointless because they don't know they're not the body in the first place. They don't remember. So that's what this is about, helping them recover who they really are that has never been one of these. These are higher genetic experience, experiments. The human form like this with twin strand of DNA and the genomes of over a billion that determine all the characteristics were created by advanced race called the Say race a long ago in galactic history and many other races that travel the stars today. The body forms were created so that beings, the Atma, could run higher faculties of awareness through them in these different planes. That was the original intent. And then the Say race stepped away. And then the result is you can see for yourself. People don't remember who they are. So they've recently returned into the scene to help correct this situation. They aren't like extraterrestrials from the stars as people understand. They have body forms in some of the dimensions on the lower planes, but they're really very evolved beings. They immortalized their physical bodies over a billion years ago. They aren't from the Milky Way galaxy. They're not from Andromeda. They're not even for the, from the physical universe any more than I am or you. They didn't interfere in all this nonsense that's been created between worlds and tyrants and races among the stars. They didn't create any of that. We did, one way or another. They have recently gone through a consciousness change themselves as have the beings in the upper worlds, even in the source, to found a way to correct this problem that is in the way of the lower dimensions becoming mirrors of the upper worlds. They're not gonna be destroyed as they have in the past a number of times. All the dimensions were wiped out in the lower worlds and beings drawn to the higher worlds and recreated, everybody put back again to go through this silly reincarnation thing as if we were bodies in the first place. We're not, never were, never will be. Beings can be, the atma cannot be harmed by any energy in the lower dimensions. I don't care if a hydrogen bomb goes up under you, it wouldn't hurt you at all because we're not made of matter. But the being that is the atma can be made to forget through fear and terror and things done to bodies that's running violently usually suddenly to get it to forget in f who it is the higher faculties it once be, was able to wield to use and they start identifying with a sanctuary physical form until they think they're a body and nothing could be further from the truth so i want to put that out there and then I'll, maybe we should go on a little journey which i like to do on your show with your permission, we will go on a little journey so people can become aware, more aware, that when they go to sleep at night, they are experts all over this planet. I don't care what they believe religiously or otherwise, they're experts at knowing how to put the body to sleep. It is not the brain in the skull that does this. It is the being running the body unconsciously that knows how to do this. It causes the pineal gland in the center of the brain to create serotonin, creates melatonin. These are chemicals which make the body run on automatic heart work, lungs work, blood circulate while you, the being, are on vacation, while you're out. That's why there's nobody home in a body that's sound asleep. The being isn't there to hear you shout at it until you shock it back in the body. The being is not a physical body and it's not shaped like this. We are in existence in a form that looks identical to the source itself on a smaller scale. Same faculties of creation as the supreme source itself. I'm not talking about some negative God that demands you worship it and then gives you nothing when you die and sends you back here. I'm not talking about those guys. Way above that. 
those guys are going through some changes right now as we speak to get them to stop misleading people as they have for ages. For the first time, I might add. When you put the body to sleep at night, you leave it. However, on planet Earth, because of the nature of governments, religions, that often work together all the way back to Rome and before that to suppress masses of people. They give them just enough information to get them to believe they'll find answers after they die because they're not smart enough to know it while they're alive. This is not true at all. You must remember that the beings who do this to the rest of us on earth have been suppressed in a similar way, sometimes more severely so that they do these things to control other people because they're terrified and they believe controlling other people is the thing they must do so that other people don't control them first. It is the thinking of a tyrant. And it's coming from subconscious fear that was put in them as well. This all has to be undone. If you want to transform the world without destruction and chaos, then all the life on that planet has to be risen to a point where they will agree to have it brought here. Ask for it. Because the beings that are capable of providing solutions to all these problems that live among the stars, that are kind, conquered anti-gravity and gene science and aging millions of years ago, they know how to do it. They're not going to charge money for it either. This has to happen when the people of this planet are so fed up with the way it is. And I'm talking about the rulers, classified people as well. They really want this change. It will be provided. This planet is now destined to become a player among the stars. But not the way it is right now. We could not be trusted with subconscious fear driving us to go play among the stars and meet extraterrestrials and not be destructive through fear when we get out there. I know for a fact the beings I work with will never tolerate people from Earth coming out there and playing amongst the stars outside of our solar system the way they are now because it would be destructive. They're not going to tolerate it. So Earth and the solar system are quarantined from traveling past a point, even with reverse engineered technology. They just are. If beings from elsewhere hadn't shut down launch computers on this planet before, the beings on this planet through misdirected fear would have blown us all up in nuclear war long ago. We're not alone in the universe. We never have been. If you're rested or sitting in a chair or laying down, imagine someone you love, you respect, you're grateful they're in your lives. It's a person, place, or thing, but something when you do it, it makes you feel good inside. You just smile. Then imagine putting all the fear you have about the future of anything financial future, crisis in Wall Street, governments and nuclear war, aging and losing loved ones and what happens after you die and fear of death, and all that just for now, because you're willing to do it. Put it over there on your bed, on the carpet, little computer disc. There's all the fear and terror of the future. Right now you're putting aside because you can. You may not have been told this before, but just like daydreaming, imagine it not being with you. It's going to stay turned off, and it's going to remain with your physical body and bodies you have in other dimensions turned off there. And then you're going to go out of your body, same way you do in the trance state called sleep. When you put it in that state, you leave. Only you're going to remain conscious because of my voice and working with me. You'll go through the same process you do at night, but you'll go on a little journey to to view what it's like to be outside of the planet Earth. To begin to remember how to visualize other worlds and other realities. Because the fact is, 
until you can visualize what's there. You can't imagine putting this into this omnipresent field of force that is not matter. And it will co-create with you and take you there. It co-creates with us. And if you create fear and terror and love of the future and hatred of the future and all this together, it's creating a split in the imagination in two ways, puts that into that field of energy, and it creates both things around you, good and bad. So we're really responsible for getting into control of what we imagine and what we feel. We must to gain freedom, or we are manipulated subconsciously to remain trapped by our own energy and through our misdirected use of the imagination. I will begin these tones, which I'll raise in pitch because they are a telepathic nature and they will shut off subconscious primary and secondary implants that people have that are listening. They just are not going with us. They just aren't. You 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 are the being running a body, not the other way around. You are not physical. The real you doesn't look like a human body. It is spherical energy. It has structure, form. You've been made to forget this. But it is not forgotten or lost, just suppressed. The awareness of this you all had is suppressed in the subconscious mind with programs that are terrorizing superimposed over it. Once you begin to understand this, you, the being, will begin to recover your ability to remember. It's a natural process now. And you will get the help from beings who can help you unravel these tight knots of subconscious fear. Fear of the unknown, fear of the future, fear of leaving your body, which you do every night anyway. You don't get any training on earth in any way whatsoever. The whole 7 billion people growing up that trained their brain, their young brain or body to understand or comprehend or be comfortable with any of this. 
So you have to recover it as an atma out of your body and bring it back to this brain and body and restructure it so that it can handle higher awareness. In this way, when you remember more of what you're doing when you're out of your body or at night when the body's in the trance state called sleep, you can bring back awareness of what you're doing, record it in the physical consciousness, and enlighten the body and being that you're running on earth. It's really you running a body, but it needs to be genetically fixed a little bit to handle these higher things. The human brain and body cannot comprehend what the Atma can know moving through the multidimensional universe. But the Atma can, and it can impart to the physical consciousness the ability to understand with confidence what these higher realities are like. That changes the physical consciousness on Earth tremendously. One thing that goes through this process is the fear of the future, the fear of death, the illusion that your physical body goes with it. And then all your higher faculties begin to turn on. Imagine that your feet, bare feet, are walking on brown moss-covered trail, three feet wide. And to each side of you is tall, four-foot-high lavender grass. And your palms are brushing the tops of the tips of the grass, and you can feel it, and it's ticklish. And you smell the air, and you can smell gardenias and lilacs and some other scent you can't put a finger on, moving, wafing through the air. The air you're breathing is pure. There's no contaminants whatsoever in the atmosphere. Your bare feet are walking on brown moss that's moist, that is glowing. It has life. There's a communication between this earth, this planet you're walking on, the moss, and you. And there's a physical form that looks like you walking on the moss, about 36, to your adult, perfectly healthy, perfectly formed in every way. And when you look up smiling, you see a spherical energy orb hovering above your head. It has a white core. And then as it moves out, there's a layer of teardrop-shaped lights that are made of more of a white to kind of a yellow, then an orange and then a green, and then a blue, and then a lavender, then a violet. There's a golden energy field surrounding it. This is the real you, what you really look like as an atma. Atma is what beings that are more advanced from other worlds and higher realities call, what people on earth call soul, the real individual energy being. And that being has been through countless lives and countless worlds on many dimensions in its history that it's been made to forget. Once they incarnated on this earth, it's like, what? How did I get here? People don't remember. And they're terrified, subconsciously terrified, to remember. They need to get over that. They get that well up courage inside their being to look at what was done so that it's just a recording consciously and is no longer affecting their nervous system in a negative way subconsciously to misdirect their thinking and feeling about everything. You walk up to a waterfall standing on a plateau. It's dropping thousands of feet from a snow-crowned mountain out of a cavern opening two-thirds the way towards the summit. And you can see it drop down a sheer cliff rock wall and the mist from the water is kissing your face and you smile. When you look at the blue sky, there's no contaminants in it whatsoever. And when you look down from this waterfall, down this mountainside, you see a dome city, clear dome over three golden pyramids with quartz crowns. There's a long ivory colored bolt building at the base between them, a lake, little white marble paths, little dome dwellings, all ivory colored. And then out further down, you see more lavender grass, and then this brown path continues a mile, mile, several miles out to 
an emerald green beach that you can see is luminous. You are standing in a body of energy you've created that looks human from the sphere that's hovering above it. And it is on earth, but not the earth you're familiar with. It is in the third parallel dimension at a different molecular time rate. The matter that makes it up vibrates at a higher frequency. And there are physical life and beings here, but there's nothing impure or contaminated in this planet Earth. And there are master adepts and beings from other worlds that, in, that work inside that dome city to work out the details of how to transform a planet like the one you're used to so backwards, so twisted like a pretzel, people on Earth collectively could not get themselves out of this trap on their own. They don't have the free will they need to do it. They think they have free will, but they do not. If they can't remember who and what they are that is an atma, not a body, and how to move around the multidimensional universe, they do not have true free will. They're making decisions based upon subconscious terror and fear. And those are incorrect decisions, and they are destructive. The beings that you will meet here can assist you to be free of such nonsense if you wish them to assist you. They are not tyrants. They won't force it on anyone. Down below the mountain, you can see a white marble clearing about 100 feet across. The brown path you're on leads in a winding curve down the mountainside, and it comes into this white marble floor. Then there's another mile or so of this brown moss-covered path between tall jungle trees that lead out to that emerald green beach. And you suddenly find yourself transported by the waterfall down the mountainside and you're standing on this white marble, it's cool and comfortable feeling. And when you look up, you smile and see the Atma, the real you running this energetic form that looks like you. Standing on a pedestal is a 10 foot tall statue of a woman made of pure quartz carved or made in the shape of this woman. And she has her hands up the side of her head with an emerald green light growing around them. When you look down that moss covered pass of the beach, you can tell that these hands are lighting up that sand. The woman has violet eyes. You can see the image of a woman right behind the surface of the quartz, a live being. And you can put your senses out as the atma and feel this hair. Her hair looks like silver metal like silver, but it's soft and long. She has longer neck and fingers than people on earth, little longer legs, but very beautiful, well contoured. And she is telepathically talking with you. When you look further into the statue, you look and you see a gold band around her forehead with an upside down teardrop shaped faceted emerald crystal. And when you look into that stone, you see that she is standing, floating in a green atmosphere in some void. It's an interdimensional mm, chamber. And you find yourself suddenly moving through the quartz as an atma, right through that emerald stone, and you find yourself hovering as a sphere with a physical form like you standing in this atmosphere, looking at this woman who is smiling at you. She is not from Earth. She has a body like she's presenting here that is living on a planet called Zeantranamon 1 on the other side of the Milky Way galaxy with her husband, her mate. The body form you see here is three and a half million years old, unaged. When you look above this body form, you see an atma, bright and luminous, like us, hovering there. That's the real person. These beings mastered genetic science very many millions of years ago. 
They aren't suffering from the illusion that they're a physical body that they're running, and thus they have this ability over it. She's simply imparting this experience to all of you so you begin to remember this is possible. Now you begin to see some other beings appear in this green void of energy. And they are master teachers, not from Earth, that work with the Galactic Interdimensional Alliance of Free Worlds out there in the Milky Way galaxy on a planet centered near the core of this galaxy. Many of them are master teachers and some are very advanced technicians and scientists and such. And they represent an association with more than 450 million space-bearing world systems in the physical universe people of Earth are aware of when they look out of the Hubble telescope and in 104 parallel ones as well. One of them is named Master Opelum and he has pale blue skin, pointed ears like an elf, beautiful green eyes, long black shiny hair. He's human. He's holding up his fingers. There's little webs between them. And he lifts his neck and there's three little slits under here. Very intrusive. You wouldn't notice them unless he lifted his neck up. These humans evolved with the ability on a mostly water covered world many millions of years ago to breathe on land or underwater. And this is a master teacher. His, him and his race were the founding members of the entire inter galactic interdimensional alliance of free worlds a very long time ago, sponsored and encouraged by the Say rays. When you can see a being now appear who's standing 18 feet tall in a physical form, perfectly healthy, about 36, big blue eyes, bigger than human eyes, a little bigger, long blonde hair in a tunic, in sandals, he looks like a Greek god, pointed ears like an elf. And above him is an Atma hovering, a bit brighter than all of us, but an Atma just like us. And he's showing you what his body form looked like before his race, over one billion years ago. He immortalized them. I don't mean they made them stay 36 in a physical form. No. They dematerialized those bodies and stored them in one of the teardrops in one of the layers of the Atma that you see hovering above the body. And when he wants to manifest it here as an energy form of him or a real physical body anywhere, he can do it instantly, carry out a mission, and then dissolve it, record it back into the sphere that he is. That's true immortalization of a physical body. The Seiris have done this a very long time ago. So he's here. There is several women adepts. Spheres of light, and in front you see these beautiful women. One from India, looks like she has an Indian body. And one with honey blonde hair, beautiful, about 36. These are master adept teachers, not known to people on earth, but they are. So they're being introduced to you. You're going to see other beings, over a hundred, appear in a circle around all of us that come from the Galactic Alliance. Highly trained technicians, very spiritually aware, telepathic, they have photographic memories. They are human, mostly, or humanoid, and they can meet with you when you're out of your body at night and help you in a much higher state of consciousness. Co-create with them getting rid of the terror that subconsciously drives your lives on Earth so that you can be free to access your higher faculties once again and play among the multidimensional universe. The communications you are experiencing with these beings, seeing them, one adept has curly, short black hair beard and short black hair curly in a maroon robe and sandals holding a crystal quartz staff that has the cross with Egyptian onk, an oval eye like with a circle opening in it. It's a device and he's standing there. The sphere that he is is hovering above this body form. The men and women from the Galactic Alliance appear as men and women. 
in Galactic Alliance uniforms and they're smiling kindly at you. These are not tyrants. They will not force their will upon you or read your mind without permission or anything like this. But they will help you co-create your way out of the trap you find yourself on on Earth if you wish them to. Just ask. Be courageous. Trust in your own true self. Find yourself now outside on the white marble floor looking at this crystal statue. You know, the woman that the statue represents was a gift to this planet. And this is Earth in a parallel dimension. Same space as the Earth you're familiar with, but a higher frequency. And you look up into space and you can see the moon. And the moon has oxygen atmosphere and water and land and dome cities on it. This has been here for ages, and it is a prototype that will be utilized to transform the Earth and the moon as you know it when the time is right. This is the type of technology and spirituality and science that is known to these people. It is not difficult for them. Now you look down this brown moss covered path that leads away from this marble floor clearing surrounded by lavender four foot high glass grass and you move down it as a being and find yourself hovering above a white glowing an emerald glowing sandy beach it's actually glowing with emerald light a foot above the, of the sand it's in a curved half moon bay shape and a beautiful blue-green ocean, luminous. The atmosphere is blue and radiant. You feel your bare feet sink into this emerald green sand. You can feel bare feet sink into it. And then the energy rushes up your legs. It's soothing. And up the top of your head, you look up and smile, and there's the spherical real you hovering and it goes into the white core and is distributed out into the green layer, turning on certain teardrops, higher faculties of remembering and recall. That's what this green energy represents, remembering, recall, recovery. You hear a sound like millions of men and women singing the hue on multiple levels, like I did at the beginning of this journey. And then it turns into one whole round, uplifting, harmonious tone. Like a hum. Then you find yourself above this planet Earth, looking at this continent with this emerald green beach. The continent stretches from one hemisphere to the other and goes about a third of the way up, a third of the way to below, and the emerald green beach, the half moon bay shaped ones down at the bottom, a third of the way from the polar poles that have no ice caps, no, no polar ice caps. And you can see the moon over here, where the moon is in the world and moon you're familiar with, but it has atmosphere and water and lakes and rivers, five dome cities on the burn. It's turning on its axis on the front, and on the back side's another dome city. What people call the dark side of the moon on Earth because it doesn't turn on its axis, so people on Earth don't see what's over there. There's more mountain ranges and a little more rugged, but it's all beautiful as it turns and you can see it. And then you see the world and the moon change to a lower frequency and you see the earth you're familiar with, the continents, the water, the oceans, the polar ice caps and the barren moon with craters that does not turn on its axis. And you find yourself suddenly hovering as a sphere above the body wherever you're sitting or laying down on earth, smiling kindly down on that form. You feel this green energy run down through the top of the white core of your being, the top of your head, into the pineal gland, the center of the brain, and it starts to turn on brain cells. It starts to get things working, higher IQ. And it moves through your being, and there's a white light with a gold tinge, follows it, comes through you, and then extends out in every direction. And it flows like an uninterrupted river through you. This you do of co-creative free will because it benefits you. And then it moves through you for the benefit of others. 
And when you're ready, open your eyes. Thank you, Scott, for the journey. Um, I know I just want to say this before the end of the show. People should get this book to read and to understand more what you what you are telling us and, uh, and go on the journey and the practice at the back of the book. Okay, there are techniques. Yeah, it's considered the books is written with association from beings from other worlds. Uh, it's designed as an international doorway for consciousness. The way it's visually written and what it shares about hidden truth, deliberately suppressed truth for the first time, reveals the perspective beings have that never grew up on earth and how they view it from outside. It involves people on earth that were forced to come here who recovered their memory and returned home. It should ring a bell for most people who read it. If any, everyone, anyone who reads that book and explores it, wanting to know truth will find it in their own being, recovering. That's how it's designed. There are two. There's this one that she showed you. Yes. And that's techniques at the back for the prologue in all 29 chapters. And then there is this one. Oh, the Emerald Norway, it's the first book of the Parallel Time Trilogy. There's 30 illustrations in it of characters and scenes. And as you can see, these beings are hovering on disks above the ocean just before, just after the poles flipped last time 100,000 years ago, destroying what was on this earth, the continent of Lemuria and most of Atlantis. The world you are on today, that continent, and you can see the Atma here, they're meeting a being who resides in the higher worlds for the first time after that disaster. There's a ship hovering up here. That's his ship. This is a woman named Melina, blue skin from another world. It's a master adept teacher with a maroon robe, same one you met tonight on this journey. And this little character is named Adren. He's not human, but he's a little master teacher from another world who has natural anti gravity abilities. The purpose of this book is to open a doorway into a hidden past so people can begin to remember more about the real history of Earth and our solar system and their co-creative purpose with beings beyond Earth and out in the multi-dimensional universe. So I think that will be beneficial for people in many wondrous and unexpected ways. Yes. Confirm. So I guess, yeah, we're good. I want to wish everybody listening the best, greatest goodwill and uplifting new experiences. May wondrous, uplifting new journeys and experiences come your way and cross your path so you can remember who you are and play among the stars, out of body, and one day this whole planet will be able to do it. Okay. So I guess I can say good night. Thank you very much, Scott. Bye-bye. Pleasant dreams. <laughs>